Hey guys, welcome, welcome to, to the, the pod, pod, the pea pod. pod. I'm Peas. And I'm Ladle. And, and we've, we've got, got a full ladle, ladle of peas just, just for you. you. So let's get <laughs> to it. Yes. <laughs> well done. That was, awesome. that was great. <clears throat> welcome to Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, uh, Wednesday. Hello it's good Wednesday. to see you. It's good to <clears throat> see you. Um, it's Worship Wednesday. It's Worship Wednesday. <laughs> we uh, just lost all the momentum there. Yeah, we did. <coughs> I just, I just blanked. Uh, I blanked. we're doing our, we're gonna do our music right. after we say. Yeah. Oh, I have one thing to say though. Mm-hmm. Don't forget to check us out on the audio platforms. Spotify and Apple Podcast. Spotify and Apple Podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mate. Yeah, yeah mate. No, that's Australian. <coughs> that's embarrassing. Anyway, um, I believe you have a song of the week for yes, us today, I do, Ladle. I do have a song of the week. It's called Ain't No Grave by Zach Winters. Would you like to play it first or read your thing and then play it? Uh, I'll, I'll play it. You, you, uh, you, uh, <laughs> ain't no grave. <laughs> uh, you can play it and then I'll talk. Okay, ready, set, go. There ain't no grave. I found out that it does not matter how much you play a song. If it's not asked for permission, you're going to get striked anyway. Really? Mm-hmm. I thought it was like you had to hit a certain amount it's of It's apparently a myth. Huh. Wow. Unless, w- unless I figured unless it's really short, because we have not been striked before, but I just figured. I saw this video that was <laughs> like, <laughs> if you if you sing the song without the R's, then they can't copyright you. And they were like, they would, we can't copyright us because <laughs> it's not the song. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> and I forget, it's this it's this duo. I don't know if they're a couple or not that do th- like these songs and they do like, improm- like impromptu songs and it's improv huh. songs. It's really funny. I'll have to say that. That is funny. Them, okay, well. Anyway. Go ahead. Ain't No Grave was a uh, gospel song that Zach Winters kind of rewrote in a way. It was for like a gospel choir kind of a thing. Um, and it's about victory over death on Resurrection Day. Um, and it was written by th- originally by this guy who was a preacher for the Church of Christ um, who was known as Claude Ely, I believe is how you say his last name. It could Ely. be, I- it, is it it could e be Ely. Ely, I was thinking. Well, I guess, a. is it start with an A or an I- mm. E? Okay. E-L-Y. In in, oh. in Lee. my town, we have Ely Street that's spelled that way, so I just said oh, Ely. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> Makes sense. Anyway, it was, it was written in, in 1934, and he was diagnosed with per- t- wow. tuberculosis. Wow. Tuber- but but tuberculosis. <laughs> Easy for you <laughs> to say. He was diagnosed with tuberculosis at the age of 12, and he was going to die young, is what the doctor told him. And he believed that God had healed him, and his family believed he... That is the day that he was inspired to write Ain't No Grave, according to an interview with his great nephew. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, according to an interview with his grave. <laughs> with his grave. <laughs> but he grave. also wrote uh, some other songs. <coughs> but more notably, he uh, wrote this song called You Gotta Move. And Elvis went on to perform a cover of this song called uh, We're Gonna Move in, it mm. in his first film called Love Me Tender. So, this guy was, like, not super well-known, but, like, his songs were well-known mm-hmm. across the Pentecostal church. Um, and it was ori- originally written in a way that was a fiery blend of bluegrass and black gospel, creating a <laughs> joyful, upbeat brand of music familiar to any listener of Pentecostal music. Uh, and it was highly influential in the first days of rock and roll. Uh, rock and roll. Mm-hmm. Wow! As many artists came out of churches full of this kind of sound. Wow! So rock and roll. Yeah, he was kind of a cool dude. Anyway, it's a really good song. I just like the sound of it more rock than and anything. Roll. I think it's got some really good, like, yummy chords. You know what I mean? When you just hear something and you're like, ooh, ooh. yeah, yeah. So and it's got a good message to it. So. Yeah, that's it's my okay. Song they of the week. they fell over on me when I was alone. Do you know why? 
Yeah. It freaked me out. I was like, <laughs> I know. duh. Anyway, anyway. Uh, your turn. My turn. This is a song called my freaking spectacles off. Um, Newspaper Boat by Gable Price and Friends. It's off of a album that just came out this year, very recently, um, and I really like it. So I'm going to play parts of it for you. Pharrell Williams song. Yeah, and then the next line is, there's a newspaper boat for the men in New York. There's a spot on your sleeve that was made for your heart. As you say it through your teeth that you won't do this again. I, how do we get immortalized? How do we buy the borrowed time? Dice, placing bets on a normal life. Pay your debts to the blind in life. So, I want to make sense of that for me? Nope. <laughs> uh, no. There, now, if you recall from either season one or season two, I, I've talked about Gable Price before. They're a great band. I love their music. It makes me feel this feeling, so much so that I created a, pod, uh, a Spotify playlist called That Feeling with that feel, uh, with the songs in it. Um, and he, they're just uh, they're a Christian band, but mm -hmm. they are very like philosophical Christian, I feel like. Um, and I've s uh, interview recently I read where Gable doesn't really know where to take the band yet. He doesn't know if he wants to make it like explicitly Christian or kind of not. He's just kind of like in this in between, and I really love it. It's just great music, and it's a shame because they've only got like two hundred thirty-eight thousand listeners a month. But mm -hmm. I love it. I, I can't make really make sense of all of what that means, but it's <laughs> really fun and cool. Yeah. And so I really like that song. It didn't come out of some crazy gospel church though, so I I don't <laughs> have quite cool the history for this piece well. of music, unfortunately. Yeah, I tried to do a report on. Uh, Ain't no grave when we were in music theory, and we oh for when we you're had, we had to analyze stuff. Yeah, but there's no like chord charts. There's no even for the Bethel ones. Mm -hmm. Even for ev like every other version of the song, the original hymn, there's no written thing other than the lyrics. And I was where did they come up with the melody <laughs> then? It's just something that people have like carried across many years. Well, I mean, but like. I've looked, I've searched far and wide for it because That's I really wanted to analyze it. Yeah. There's some, like I said, some yummy chords. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I yeah. I wanted to know what they were. I'll never know. <laughs> I mean, I could figure it out on the piano, I suppose, but I'm not about to spend. Fine, can figure it out pretty quick, probably. He's good yeah. at that stuff. He's got a, a brain in his head. Yeah. Dang. I can't do it. I <laughs> got a brain in my head. Yeah. Sometimes. Simon's got a brain for music, though. Yeah. And most people don't. So. He's awesome. He's cool. Brennan's roommate. Sion. <laughs> Great guy. Uh, anyway. Shifting gears a little bit. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> if you remember, uh, flashback to the car stuff we did in season one. Anybody remember any of that? Crankshaft goes to the, connected to the piston, and the piston's connected to the head. Anyway, uh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to say what she was going to say. We're shifting gears <laughs> into uh, which, we, well, I guess the benefits and downfalls to larger versus smaller worship teams. Mm -hmm. uh, back home, I feel like our youth worship team is very small. And then our morning worship team kind of fluctuates a little bit and we have a few like interchanging groups depending on what week it is mm -hmm. uh and i've never really seen a huge like worship team like really big uh but i feel like y it's typically overdone if it's too many people interesting okay uh because then it just gets showy instead mm -hmm. of like god honoring yeah you know what i mean i do I also think that smaller teams can be a little too exclusive, though, and not be, not include people who have clear talent. But what if it's smaller cool. because of constraints rather than smaller because of desire to be smaller? What do you mean by constraints? I mean, what about that church that we went to that had eight people? 
and their worship team could only be four people, let's say, or let's say literally they didn't have a worship team at all. I know we would have had to be the worship team. <laughs> we I mean, like worship team. we didn't even go there. I know, but like for a church that's smaller, that only has maybe the four or five people that actually want to be on the worship team that have the desire, they've put up posters, they've asked, you know, and it's literally just, just have four or five of them. I mean, and they don't want to be, is that, I mean, because I know what you're saying, the exclus- exclusivity of a smaller I worship team that because they only want I the mean, ex- experts is, is, a pr- is a problem. But like, Well, not even that. Sometimes it's just like this person isn't cool enough to be a part of our team. Right. And I'm saying that like even a smaller church like that, like they can, you know, have a, sm- a small worship team and their church can grow and get bigger. And as that happens, they don't have to stick to their small worship team is what I'm saying. Yeah. That oftentimes they'll just be like, well, this is how it's been forever and we don't like change, so we're going to keep it how it is because you guys stink. I guess that's, n- that's not optimal. My perspective is I like bigger ones because um, I like bigger ones that <coughs> play that can play the music well, not in an ex- exclusivity type of way, but just like I love – like big sound for worship songs, like especially when it comes to like hymns. Okay. Um, th- go ahead. You like larger teams, but you often talk about Shane and Shane, which is two people. Two people plus and a drummer a and a pianist. A couple of people, yeah. <sighs> yeah. Okay. So maybe. All right. So <laughs> the thing with Shane and Shane is that they, they're incredible musicians. And yeah. they can produce sounds high and high-level music to the way that I enjoy it. And I think... And if it were a less skilled team of four it, people. Right, it wouldn't be as nice. And so, I mean, the all other <coughs> thing is that I've never heard them in, like, a strictly church context. I mean, we've True. seen them perform in, in Tory Gray, but, like, I'm sure they, they lead their own worship services. And so... Or I'm pr- I'm own worship service. And so I don't know what that's like, but I do know that... S- you know, a smaller worship team is is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. The way I, that I like it, though, is that if it's going to be smaller, if it's smaller, like like I've seen three guys on stage: guy with the guitar, cajon, and uh, you know something else, uh, some other instrument, and piano, maybe. you know pia- piano maybe. And that's worked fine. I love that. Um, I just really love when there are big worship songs that have great. I don't know. It's, it's really interesting because my perspective is I don't love big churches that have big worship teams that are too performative, too overproduced. I love big worship teams that are enough to create a great sound and it's just all of it connects well together. And like, so what I was trying to say earlier was like for hymns, like the way that Shane and Shane reproduce hymns um, sometimes requires a larger team to produce what they do in a studio. Mm. And so like, I would love to see I, I love to see hymns that have been revamped that keep the original music, that keep the lyrics, the feel of it, but there's just there's more girth to it. There's, you know, pads and there's really nice lead lines that go into yeah. the, uh, that sort of thing. I also I feel like when I'm like on a worship team, I might prefer a little larger of a team. Yes. See, maybe that's a different thing we need to talk about. Would you rather would you prefer to be on a bigger worship team or a smaller one? Well, I just don't think I like to be in the the light, the, the center spotlight. stage, yeah. And I I don't prefer to sing harmony or er, melody. I prefer to sing harmonies, if anything, and if if I'm singing at all, in which case most times I just be playing piano. Right. But my freshman year, our freshman year, I suppose, I was a part of a team that was led by a guy on my brother floor, and he. You know, there were two acoustic guitars, a bass, no electric, which I like. I'm not a big electric guitar in worship setting kind of gal. Darn it. We had a drummer in, in, in the caged drum, drum set. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <coughs> and I feel like there was some other stuff going on. But Bongos. Who knows? Xylophone. It was a larger team, though. Yeah. And... We sounded very full. Oh, oh, we just had a lot of vocalists. That was it. Mm. Um, like Daniel. Yeah. And <coughs> and it was a lot of fun. I mean, I got to play around with stuff on the piano because there were other supporting instruments. I, w- I didn't have to hold down the fort, so to yeah. speak. 
in like melody you know what i mean yeah and structure because oh and we had a second uh keyboard that was it we had a synth okay yeah yeah uh, that's i that's okay that's what i like about playing because i like playing electric i do like electric guitar i think it's almost necessary mm. to the experience that i enjoy hmm. um but when it comes to i, I like bigger bands when, so that I don't have to be the guy to play the chords and keep the structure going because if you have an electric guitar and acoustic guitar and a pianist and a singer being the electric or acoustic guitarist a lot of the times like the electric guitar has to be the bass line and, and if you're if you're lead lining on the electric when it's too small of a band there's like this emptiness underneath it yeah. it's like this like hollow and it's not horrible it's just oh it's it can be noticeable that there's no something carrying it and so i enjoy big playing on bigger bands because then i can be free to do what i want um, but sometimes it can get too big and there's two electric guitarists and then we kind of have to share that or mm. um i just if, if that were to be the case i'd like to have more time to communicate with him or her mm -hmm. and be able to really um uh you distracted me <laughs> um be able to really uh coordinate that with the other guitarists so that we could come up with something that's very yeah. harmonizing or whatever you know to make it big to make it nice but um i, I would be fine playing with a smaller band that's fine mm -hmm. I, I i have no aversion to that especially maybe if i'm even playing electric or acoustic um that's nice but i think i just do like the bigger productions but not to the point where it's overproduced i think yeah, there is th a line i think that when i'm leading a team i prefer a smaller team because it's just easier to manage mm -hmm. but yeah i can see that like when I was at camp and I was leading, and I preferred a smaller team. If I was at youth group and I was part of that team, I wasn't leading. Uh, it was always a smaller team. But in that, there was I had three different like leaders over my time in youth group in our band, and the first one who I I love to death. He's great. He is now married to my mentor Allie uh -huh. and but he uh, he's the worst communicator <laughs> <laughs> I mean he wouldn't have me playing every week sometimes it would just be him and his guitar which was fine I don't I don't mind that but he wouldn't tell me and so I'd show up super early to youth group and get dropped off because I couldn't drive yet mm -hmm. and he'd be like oh you're not on this week Dang. and I'd be stuck at church for the next two hours doing nothing wow that's so tough <laughs> And then I had, you know, another leader that came in shortly after who was good friends with the first guy. And he was on top of his stuff. He had stuff to me a week in advance. He was very, like, put together. He had all the stuff put into uh, the planning, center. planning center. Yeah. And it was it was wonderful. Yeah, that was really helpful. things ran effectively. Mm -hmm. uh, and <coughs> um, then my friend Winter was leading. And it was kind of a mixture she wasn't quite as organized as Caden, but she wasn't quite as disorganized as Riley. And right. so, and I felt like that was okay too. I didn't, but <coughs> the whole time it was always a smaller set of us mm -hmm. because there was only me, another girl named Hannah who sang. She doesn't play any instruments. She just sings. And I was, I was on keyboard and for the longest time I didn't let them know that I could sing because I just didn't. Didn't want to expose yourself well they they didn't really need me to to begin with but i'll also like uh i just i was too nervous to sing in front of people mm. at that point i'm still pretty nervous to sing in front of people now but you don't like the spotlight like you were saying right and i just <coughs> don't feel like i sound that great but you know whatever and <coughs> um but I don't know where. I'm oh, uh, we had one singer, one pianist, one person playing acoustic, mm -hmm. and maybe a drummer occasionally, depending on, like sometimes if Caden was leading, Riley would play drums. Sometimes if Riley was leading, Caden would play drums. But sometimes it would just be, you know, only one of them was there, and it, it was a team of like four or five of us usually. But I felt like it was always kind of empty. But then again, <coughs> our morning worship team for church is very, like, 
advanced. They're all very talented musicians. They're all mm. very like put together. They they have their stuff in time on time, uh, and it's like a full production. Yeah, and it's very full. Yeah, and That's so why I like it. But it's a small team. I mean, it's not very big. It's uh, piano, drums, one electric. Me, well, he switches between electric and bass usually, and maybe another person playing electric or bass, and then an acoustic guitar, and mm-hmm. a and a vocalist. Yeah. So six people, not huge, but not tiny. And <coughs> I think that's wonderful, and it's very full. But I don't know what you could would consider to be large in a team. Do you know what I mean? I'm thinking like ten people. It's too much. It's overdone. I mean, it would depend on what those ten people were doing. <coughs> well, in my book, you you need an acoustic guitar, a piano, a bass guitar. I agree. A lead vocalist mm-hmm. who can also be playing any of those instruments, mm-hmm. and a drum drum person. Only That's one hot. singer. Well, or are you saying any of those could sing as well? You d- uh, you don't yeah, have any, uh, any standing alone. Yeah. So it's just to sing. Yeah, any of those could also sing. So maybe you have a, a, a harmonizing vocalist. Six. Six people at the most. And that's if you need your two singers separate from your other four musicians. Yeah. Which most teams don't. Right. So that's four or five people. Yeah. And it's still a very full sound because you have all your instruments doing all the things. Fair. And I don't think electric guitar is necessary. I do. <coughs> Period. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, if you like that, you like that. I think it. I makes do. It. I think it just makes me feel like I'm at a concert instead of worship. Mm. I'm sorry you feel that way. Thanks. I don't want you to feel that way, because it's really awesome. And I think sometimes with certain songs, it's okay. Because I like the solos and stuff that they put in the instrumentals. Mm-hmm. Then I'm like, how much am I worshipping God or how much am I worshipping that guitarist for how well he can play? I love worshipping God listening to somebody play a solo like that. I could sit in ch- in a pew or in a church seat and just listen to an entire service of well thought out, well done mm-hmm. electric mm-hmm. lead lines that, and I could worship God that way. But that's just me. It also would be a guitarist, so yeah, yeah. it's kind of your bread and butter. Yeah. Anyway, I think we have extended our stay and we've okay. told all of our pieces. All right. Well, Unless you have more things you want to say. Uh, no, I don't. Okay. Come see us on Friday. We're, We're having, having a, a guest. special guest who you'll find out who they are on Friday. <laughs> yeah. So <coughs> come listen. We're talking about the Midwest. And the beef within Midwest. And I'm not talking about cows. <laughs> I mean, so we did. <coughs> I mean we did briefly talk about cows. So we, we will. We will. Uh-oh. Oh, uh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> see you on Friday. Anyway, we'll see you on Friday for another Keeping Healthy Little Peace. Bye, guys.